Okay, very good. Thanks, Greg. All right, uh, we'll, all right. We'll open the February 17th, 2021 meeting of the Delhi Township Zoning Commission with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Greg, can you pull up a flag for us, please? Hello. Sure. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of America and to the republic, the republic for which stands one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. all right, the roll call of officers, Mr. Burke. Present. Mr. Michaels, guess it, hopefully he'll be able to catch up with us uh, and gets his computer straightened out there. Mr. O'Connor? Here. And Mr. Weisker? Here. All right, we do have a quorum. Um, Sunshine Law certification, Mr. Roach? I hear, hereby certify the requirements of Section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code and the rules adopted pursuant thereto. Have been complied. Have been completely complied with for the meeting of February seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Okay, very good. We are legal. Uh, approval of meeting minutes. We do not have any since we just had a meeting a couple weeks ago, so the minutes are not completed yet. We'll go to the first agenda agenda item, which is case DC twenty twenty one dash o two. Mr. DeLong. Sure. Before we get started on that, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, I just want to share with everyone, since this is a zoning commission meeting and the public may not be aware of this as we're streaming live on Facebook, really the rules and procedures of how the zoning commission works. And I highlighted the area in yellow is the primary um, area of, of interest, uh, items four and five. Item four is pretty much just how the structure of the meeting is set up. We do, as you already heard, the call of the meeting to order, pledge of allegiance and roll call and sunshine law certification and meeting minutes. And then we'll get into the agenda items. Item five is for those that are um, wishing to participate in the meeting. We do have residents that have registered to participate in tonight's meeting. Um, in there, they have to be recognized by the presiding chairperson at that time. They need to give their name, their address. And, um, and also, since we are streaming on video, you have to have your camera on to speak publicly, as this is a public meeting. Um, you must come forward well, to the microphone, which you hopefully have one on your computer and state your name and address. And then all questions should be addressed to the chairperson, not the applicant. As we talk about every meeting, it can get easy to chime in easily when you see the applicant's face um, on your screen of your computer, phone, or laptop. So that is kind of the structure of the meeting. So just wanted to run that by everyone. Um, as we proceed through the meeting and we get to the citizen comments, we will ask them, the citizens that are registered, to turn their cameras on if they do wish to participate in the meeting. So with that said, I will pull up now the uh, my PowerPoint presentation for tonight. I'll move screens here. So it looks like I'm actually looking at everyone and not looking off to the side. Um, so this is a public hearing on an application for proposed development plan for properties located at 643 through 687 Covedale. And those are the parcel numbers. The subject properties are zoned DD, planned multiple family or multiple residence district. And the applicant is Tim Helms of 643 of LLC. Um, just to give the public a little bit of history about this, we actually started this um, back in November. Um, this is property known as the Whittaker Forest property. Um, the applicant did come before the zoning commission back in November and requested a rezoning of the property to zone it from C residence, which is single family residence, to the double D, which is a planned multiple uh, residence district. Back in uh, December 16th, the applicant was then before the board of trustees because uh, as you know, the zoning commission only makes recommendations. Um, they were in front of the trustees and at that night um, did receive approval for the rezoning request. Um, with all zoning requests, there is a 30 day referendum um, that is a time where people in the community can file a petition to actually overturn and have it put on a ballot um, to actually have possibly the, the rezoning case overturned. That did not occur. So actually on the 15th of January, the 30 day referendum period um, to appeal expired. And then here we are tonight at the zoning commission. And this is for the development plan because 
As we see, they are in a double D plan district, which requires a development plan to be approved. Just a little summary of this project. It is 6.47 acres of land, 11 structures, a total of 44 units with a density of 6.8 units per acre. Um, based on the submitted development plan, they have one structure that has three units, nine with four units, and another uh, single structure with five units. And there are the building setbacks, which do meet all the requirements of the zoning. Here's a summary of the parking. Um, it is 152 total parking spaces at 3.5 units per acre, including driveway and garage. And there's an additional, um, and that also includes 20 surface parking spaces in seven locations. There's a 10 foot landscape buffer around the north, south and west property lines, which do abut um, primarily residential, especially on the uh, south and west uh, property lines. The north is a water tower. Um, there is an entrance to the development that will come off Covedale. There's an interior development uh, road network that will consist of a loop drive. Um, there is um, one retention slash detention um, pond, which I know the applicant will probably talk a little bit more about tonight. That'll be located in the southwest corner of the development. Um, I know this is a little difficult to see being on a computer screen, but here is the layout of the development. And this is kind of very busy, but I I uh, scan in all the drawings that we received as part of this. And this is just a site utility plan, a grading plan. And then there's a landscaping plan. And there, they're providing extensive landscaping to be uh, installed along all property lines. There's a 10 foot landscape buffer along the north, south, and west property lines. They're also proposing a three or a Kentucky board three rail fence to run along the main drive to the north property line. And then they also stated in their application that signage will comply with township regulations. Here is a copy of the landscaping plan. It's pretty busy. Um, down here in the lower left portion of it, you will see um, the signage. Um, hey, Greg, Greg, yes. sorry yes. to interrupt you here. We're not, I'm not seeing a presentation. Oh, you're you, not? No. Oh, sorry. Let me see here. Is anyone else not seeing it? Yeah, it's not yeah. showing up. No, no, none of us. Oh my gosh, you made me go this far. Oh, okay, hold on a second. Let me try this again. I think I'm in, Greg. All right, sounds cool. good. Well, I am apologizing here. I am going to have to start over since we have <laughs> gone through half the presentation. Um, sorry about that. Let's see here. Thank you for chiming in on that. Sorry um, if it's my fault. I, I don't know. Oh, no, I wish. No, you're fine. I wish somebody would have said something earlier, so I'm not looking like a fool. <laughs> How's that? There we go. OK, there I'm going to start all the way back over again. Sorry about that. And I want to apologize, everyone, everyone in the public that is sitting here watching us mess up on social media tonight. So here's the case. <laughs> It's case 21, VA 21-02. It is a public hearing on an application for proposed development plan for properties located at 643 through 687 Cove Dale. And there's the parcel numbers. It is zone DD, which is planned multiple family residence. And the applicant is Tim Helms. And let's see here. Sorry about that. Um, this property, again, um, for those that have probably been watching on Facebook Live, I apologize, you're gonna be hearing this again, but this property is formerly known as the Wittish Center Flores property. Um, a little history of the project to date, um, back in November, they, the applicant was before the Zoning Commission meet, or the Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission did make a recommendation uh, to rezone the property from C residence, which is single family residence, to the Double D Plan Multiple Residence District. On 1216, the Township Trustees, Board of Trustees, that is, approved the rezoning request. On the 15th of January, there was a 30-day referendum from the date of that hearing in December um, for, the, for anyone to appeal um, or file an appeal uh, to, re, to the rezoning request or that was approved. That expired on the 15th. Um, and then on the 17th of uh, February, which is tonight, we are in front of the Zoning Commission for the development plan, which is part of the requirement for um, for having a, a double district or double letter multiple uh, plan district. Summary of the project, 6.47 acres of land, a total of 11 structures. There's 44 units on this at a density of 6.8 units per acre. 
Um, one structure will have three units, nine will have four, and another structure will have five. And there are the building setbacks, which do meet requirements in the zoning resolution. Parking summary, there's a total of 152 parking spaces on the property, um, which is about 3.5 units or per, per unit. That includes driveway and garage. Um, and then there's 20 surface spaces also in seven locations. The applicant's proposing a landscape buffer on the north, south, west property lines. Entrance to the development will come from Covedale. Interior development road network will consist of a loop street and there's a retention slash detention area, which the applicant will talk about in more detail um, in the southwest corner of the development. Um, I apologize again for the smallness of this picture, but it's what we have to deal with in today's world. Um, but this is a layout of the development plan. And this is the site utility plan, a grading plan. And then there for the landscaping plan, there's extensive landscaping along all the property lines. Um, the applicant is also proposing a buffer of 10 feet along the north, south, and west property lines. The applicant is also proposing a Kentucky board three rail fence to run from the main drive to the north property line and signage will comply with all township regulations. And here is a copy of the uh, landscaping plan. Um, here is a, down here in the lower left hand corner of it is a sign plan. Um, I know there's been questions about where the sign is located. It looks like it's probably located in this area right here and will run. And then you have the Kentucky board fence running to the north. And as you can see, there's a lot of landscaping on this plan around, um, especially the, the residential areas. Some information on the buildings. The um, applicant is proposing asphalt sh uh, shingles. And you can see the color there. The facades will be in a vinyl siding along with stone veneers and trim boards. And you can see there, there are various colors. And here's elevations of those buildings. Um, there's also a street lighting plan with three or 13 decorative street lights to be installed along the roadway system. And they're to be 12 feet in height. And here is a layout of the uh, lighting plan. You kind of see where they're going to be located. It's where these red dots are around the drive. And that's the fixture, which is black in color. And as this process goes through, should it be approved tonight, and the applicant starts work on this, I just wanted to share with the community kind of who's all involved. Um, the township is not involved in a lot of this review. Um, primarily, it's just the Department of Community Development will be issuing our zoning certificates for the buildings, signs, walls, fences everything on that property. And we'll also issue compliance certificates once the buildings and projects are complete. Hamilton County Building Department's gonna be involved in issuing all building permits for the buildings and inspections during the construction of that project. Hamilton County Soil and Water will issue the grading and stormwater permits plus to do their inspections. The Engineers Department will issue a curb cut permit for Covedale and any additional work in the public right of way on Covedale. And then you'll also have Waterworks, MSD, Duke Energy, Cincinnati Bell, whoever else you can think of at this point, they'll also all be involved um, in the issuance of utility permits and the installations and their inspections. And I kind of wanted to share that with the public because a lot of people will think we as a township have all the reviews of everything and we really don't being a township. A lot of that is actually done by other agencies throughout the county and other public utility companies. So. We have very limited um, review processes, primarily through the zoning process. And I wanted to make sure the public was completely aware of that. So do you have any questions for me at this point? I do apologize for the sharing screen issue, but we usually run pretty smooth. I don't know what happened there. So <laughs> <laughs> that worked. There you go. <laughs> it worked. Any questions for the members of the board right now, or, or perhaps we'll wait and go through uh, uh, Greg, you can go through your staff report, or we want to turn it over to the. Uh, I can do it. Your whatever you please. Well, we uh, let's let's briefly go through your staff report. I know they uh, the proponents have a uh, copy of that and have uh, made some responses to that. So if you want to go through it quickly, and then we'll return to them to uh, answer some of the questions you have raised. They're not a problem at all, and I don't have this hand in, so bear with us. Um, as we go through this real quick. I'll only hit the areas where there were some questions. 
um, if, that's, if that's okay for you. Absolutely. So some of the questions that we came up in our review of the submitted plans were the building elevations. There were some questions where things probably weren't all labeled and we just wanted to make sure that the applicant was aware they, that those items needed to be labeled and identified. And that included some vertical siding that was shown on the eaves of the building. Um, the applicant did address that. We had a question on whether or not the width of them, because they looked the width of the siding looked wider than the horizontal siding. And the applicant did address that stating that the vertical siding will be four inches, which matches the horizontal siding. Um, doors, uh, you know, they did not have labeled the color or material type. They did respond back saying the doors will be galvanized steel, white in color. We had some questions about posts. Um, there's some posts on the, around the porches um, that, that was not labeled. They responded back that it, the posts will be treated lumber wrapped in brake metal, color white. And handrails will be powder coated metal or composite in white and color also. Windows, um, we had a question about, you know, what's the material and color are those going to be? They will be vinyl windows, white in color is what the applicant is proposing. Garage doors, same thing. They'll be uh, vinyl, white in color. Um, gutters and downspouts, they'll be aluminum, white in color. And then the lighting, we had some questions about that. And their response was standard porch and garage lights color to be black, which I'm assuming is probably like a regular coach light that you see on, on most homes. Um, and then we had some questions about the decorative lighting on the street. Uh, the app, the great drawing that we had submitted to us, but it just showed an assumed color of black. So we did ask the question about that and they said the coast, the post will be black in color. Um, we may want them to, I'm assuming it's either gonna be a, an aluminum or metal pole, um, but that's not a big deal as long as we know the color is black. Um, there was a discrepancy on the landscaping plan. Um, there was, uh, as we counted the landscaping, I'm not sure if I'm going to call these things correctly, but cutlery ju junipers. Um, in the plan, it was showing 32, or the legend on the plan was showing 32, or calling out 32, and the drawing was showing 33. So they address it and say they will be 33 junipers um, on the in the landscaping plan. Um, and then we had uh, some questions about landscaping around the units of the condo units. Um, what is that gonna be like? And they said landscaping will be provided along the walk and in various areas along the sides of the buildings. Um, we did have some additional questions, um, which I would probably refer to, well, I, I guess I can answer them, but um, we had a question about curbing. We assumed it was curved based on the drawings and they said that the, the streets will be curved with a roll curved. Um, there was a question about the lift station, and I probably want them to address that in more detail about just so the public understands what a lift station is. I'll pass on that one. Um, we had a question about whether or not there's going to be mail, mail delivery to each individual unit, or what you see in most condominium units nowadays is a common area where all the mailboxes are located. And they address that the mailbox cluster is to be located um, by building number 10 which is on the site plan. Um, we had a question about, and this came up in the rezoning about the pond and retention, water, storm water intake release and all that stuff. I'm gonna refer to them on answering that one, even though they did address it. I know that's um, been a very um, point of interest for the neighbors in that area. And then we did have a question about sidewalks along Covedale. Uh, currently Foley Square, which is located to the south of this development, has a sidewalk that runs along Covedale Avenue and terminates at the north property line of their development. Um, we were just asking the question, is there going to be any sidewalks extended either along the whole length of this development or at least to their roadway system in their development? Um, as the community is really trying to promote walkability, and this is a lot of units in here, and we want people to be able to walk for our parks and everything else and enjoy the amenities of the township. And they did state in their application or in their response that a new sidewalk from the new um, street entrance would run south to the existing sidewalk that is constructed at Foley Square. So that is my quick summary of the staff report. Um, I do, I, where I worked before we had design review boards, it wasn't city government, we were able to do those. So. I did kind of go through this in my, I kind of felt refreshed going back through the old ways of uh, 
reviewing plans at my previous places of employment. Um, so it was enjoyable to go through this. And they, and they did a very good application, which was very easy for us to go through. And we really appreciate their effort in their submittal tonight. So. Well, very comprehensive review, Greg. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn, turn it over to the applicants. And, and first of all, appreciate the, uh, you folks responding to, to Greg's concerns uh, prior to the meeting. So, uh, Tim, if you want to take it from here. There I am. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, Greg, great job. You're welcome. Um, we're excited about this project. We're excited about the community. Uh, we think it's going to be a home run. We like a, a lot of things about this project. Um, and we put a lot of time and effort and money into it. So uh, thank you. Uh, let me see. So your first question um, that you wanted me to address was the existing uh, pond. I want to defer to uh, Mark Rosenberg on that. He's our uh, civil engineer. Here's Mark. Um, he'll explain that a little, little more in detail. Um, Mark, you want to just handle that now? I, I will. I'll go ahead. Hey, Greg, would you be able to pull up the grading plan by chance? Sure. Well, hopefully I can do it correctly this time. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second here. I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, the detention basin along with the, uh, the grading that's going to be on the south side of the property next to Foley Square. Now, there's some concerns on some grading through there. Um, if you look at the drawing that, that's shown on the south, north is up on this drawing. The southwest corner is, is where we're locating a detention basin. Oh. I want to kind of clarify what the difference is between a retention and detention. Retention, it holds water with some added extra uh, ability to decay stormwater on top of that water. This basin is going to be a detention basin. It's going to be a dry basin. And what it, how it functions is uh, when a storm event happens and runs into the curbs and the streets and into the uh, catch basins, it temporarily gets stored, temporarily gets stored in this detention basin and slowly released through a pipe system um, that goes northwest into the, uh, the subdivision on the west. The, the grading plan is shown on the south portion of this at butts up against uh, some of the residents and Foley Square. The downspouts that are currently draining into pipe that are uh, on, on Wittes, what was Wittestatter's property, uh, we are daylighting those into a ditch that ultimately goes directly into that detention basin. At no point will there any be back any backup into that left unit that has a uh, walkout basement. Uh, currently that elevation, I believe is the, if I'm correct here, I'm getting my elevation the difference between projects is uh, 893.3. The top of our dam for the detention basin is gonna be approximately 889. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be about four feet lower. So in no way, shape or form, any backup storm water be driven into that basement. It's gonna be lower just as it's functioning now. So how we have this proposed is the, the residents on the west side on Heavenly Drive that uh, experience a concentrated flow from the existing uh, retention pond that's there right now, that retention pond goes away now. And that concentration flow that goes off onto Mr. Book's property and the other properties ultimately draining into Mr. Quatman's property, it, uh, it will now be piped, so they won't experience any of that concentrated flow anymore. It will actually be tied into a new catch basin on Mr. Quatman's property where he has a uh, head wall that's very hard for him to maintain. When we install a new uh, CB23, which is an ODOT standard, that'll allow his, uh, his maintenance of his backyard be much, much better than what he has right now. So that, that experience of those concentrated flows from the overflow of that existing retention pond, that'll go away. It'll all be piped and they won't no longer will, uh, will have that flow in, the, in that area. So in addition to that, um, we, we provide water quality feature. We added a, a little extra volume in the actual detention pond to slow the rate out more so that we improve the water quality with all the oils and the, the, the debris that flows through the streets. Um, and, and 
the natural slope of the site will, will be retained. The, the, the main difference for Foley Square is they're, they're now going to have uh, those units, those building units one and two behind them. Um, building two will have um, maybe three of the units will be walkouts and building three will have full walkouts and building one will not. Um, and, the, and the rest of them, uh, rest of the buildings will, will be uh, will not have walkouts with the exception of building four and building five. Those will be full walkouts. So the, the one thing that uh, the residents on the west side are going to experience is they're, they're, they're no longer going to have temporarily that uh, foliage behind them because that'll have to be cleared to build this project. However, the extensive landscaping that's proposed between buildings four and five with Heavenly Lane uh, through a few years will mature and then will be recoup that uh, that privacy, so to speak. So um, that is all I have to add in reference to that. And I can certainly, we, but Tim and I can ask, answer some more questions if you'd like. Mark, I assume the detention uh, base will be uh, similar to where the pond is now. Is that correct? It's going to be just slightly south of there. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's in it and slightly south. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, members of the board, right now with the, about this particular item? I had a question about the storage uh, for for all the units. Where where I didn't see that on any of the plans. Yeah, there there is, uh, Greg. If you could go to the uh, utility plan, the site utility plan. Sure. Screen again. So we do have a capacity letter from MSD saying they can handle the extra capacity for this development. Um, if you look in the northwest corner in front of building yet yeah, where Greg is circling, that is, that is a lift station. And that is a lift station at, that the whole site is going to um, gravity drain to that lift station, then get pumped through a, a three inch force main to the gravity sewer on Covedale Road. Hmm. The gravity sewer on Covedale Road is just not deep enough to service this project. So currently we have uh, the design for building 10 and 11, which fronts uh, uh, Cogdale, mm -hmm. Cogdale Avenue, those will be gravity into the existing sewer. The rest of the units will go to that lift station. That lift station will be designed um, by uh, Beckman Engineering and uh, will be permitted through Hamilton County Health Department and the EPA. Um, so each building will have its own service lateral into the main line that drains to that northwest corner. It's proposed right now for that uh, lift station to have uh, intensive uh, landscaping around it. Um, depending on uh, what Beckman Engineering comes up with, we may have uh, fencing around that also. But uh, we, we plan on some landscaping through there. I hope I'm clear on describing that, sir. Yeah, interesting. Um, so it doesn't tie directly right into the regular storage system at, on Covedale Avenue? It does. It will be pumped into that sanitary sewer on Covedale Avenue. Oh, okay. And it's going to be big enough to handle it? Yes. Okay. Will that lift station, will that be a building or will that be a... a uh, what type of a structure do you envision? Yeah, for what, it, what it will be is your, it'll be just similar to your standard sanitary manholes, two of them right next to each other in the, in the ground. Oh, the top, okay. The top will be on the surface. Okay, great. That, that was my question. Thank you. So, so it'll be quiet relatively. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions about the, the lift station or, or water issues at this point? Okay. Charlie, I, I do have one about the detention pond. All right. Uh, I heard him say that the the water, when it leaves there, goes north and west, and it's all in pipes, I think is what he said. Is that correct? That's correct. And then w where does it end up? Where does it... Currently, there's a system um, at the northwest corner. Greg, if you go to the utility again, no please. Problem. We're going to keep you busy, Greg. Oh, that's fine, as long as I don't screw it up. So, 
So in, in the uh, northwest corner of the development, there's a property um, that's uh, Justin Quatman, which Tim Helms and I met with to discuss tying this uh, storm into that storm sewer, that the, the existing storm sewer that's there right now. In his southeast corner, is we will tie in a 24-inch storm with a new catch basin um, that he currently has a big hole there. It's a really, it's oh. an ugly hole that he, he, you know, tough to maintain. And everything currently flows to that. So that storm goes to the northwest. You can see some dotted mm -hmm. lines there. Uh, yeah. Greg, if you could move your, yeah. yeah. That is a public storm sewer that goes to that, and then it shoots out to the west and ultimately goes through the subdivisions through um, the Glens of Dale High down the uh, Rapid Run. So one thing I wanted to mention on the, the storm, when we design these storm systems, we figure out a, a, a runoff of the existing condition, and then we're required to design the proposed so that less runoff goes through the system. That, that's part of how the, the, the regulations are structured with Hamilton County. So I hope I'm clear on that, that answer, sir. Uh, yes, and one more. It, so it, it is. it all remains in some sort of pipe? Or that's correct. Or that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Tim, did you have anything additional uh, comments that you want to make concerning uh, Greg's questions or issues? Uh, no, as, as long as everyone else is okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good on my end. Okay, uh, I'd like to go to members of the board right now uh, for any additional questions or concerns uh, at this point before we go to the, the general public. I'm okay. I, they, I'm they've been putting the right information in. Yep. Yeah. I'm good. It's pretty thorough. Yeah. Tim, I had one question with the parking. Uh, it talks about two spaces in the garage and one space in the driveway. Does the driveway not accommodate two vehicles? I'm a little bit confused by that. Actually, the, the, the driveways do accommodate two vehicles, and uh, each unit has two car garages. Okay, but you didn't indicate, on, on the plan, you just indicated one space in the driveway, I guess that was, but it actually would, would hold two, two it would, vehicles? It, it yeah. would hold two, but we've calculated it as one parking stall just for that unit. Oh, okay. So there's a possibility of 196 spots instead of 152, possibly. Yeah, if that's ever needed. Yes. Okay. Well, it depends on how big the party is. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and one other question, uh, why did you decide not to extend the sidewalk all the way to the north property line? I can answer that, Tim, if you'd like. Um, sure. Right now, um, there is no sidewalk currently along the frontage of this lot, and there's no sidewalk along the water tower property and right. um, the subdivision north of that. Mm -hmm. um, thought it was prudent to go ahead and extend the sidewalk from the new entrance to the existing sidewalk on Foley Square. So the, uh, the residents that do um, live in the uh, Garden Grove can, can go walk down through Foley Avenue and try to deter them from going down into uh, what is a hilly area in front of the uh, water tower and then the glens also. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, anything else of members of the board before we uh, ask for citizen comments? Any other questions, concerns at this point? So it'll be sidewalked all the way to Delhi Park because they can go out on the yes. pool. That'll be correct, yeah. Up the pool, yeah. Okay, hearing no other questions at this time, you have another opportunity at the end of this. But, uh, Greg, uh, how about citizens' comments? How can we uh, work through yeah, that? Um, I, don't, I don't know who wants to speak. So if anyone wants to speak, I guess they can turn their camera on and wave their hand or hmm. let me try. I don't know. I know Judy said she needed some help. So let me see if... Uh... Uh. 
Nope, oh, she's over there now. <laughs> <laughs> you, feel, you figured it out, Judy. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I was saying before the meeting, oh, I should address this to the chairman, right? Yeah. That's yes. fine. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. Judy, okay. Judy, give your, give your name and <laughs> well, they'll, they'll hear the questions also. So yeah, Judy, fine. make okay. sure you give your name and address too. So uh, Judy Tenzing, six twenty five Covedale, and that's. Um, uh, right, it's going to be right behind the five unit building on the south boundary of Garden Grove. So, and actually, Tim stopped over this afternoon to just to talk about um, the email I had sent you that you had forwarded to him, which was very helpful. He's really um, cooperative, let's put it that way. Um, my question was about landscaping and the drainage and the drainage issue I think has already been addressed because we were worried that the two bottom walkout units were going to get swamped and we didn't know where our detention pond was going to, um, I forget if that's detention pond, yeah. no, retention, whatever, it's was going to wind up draining to and uh, then we have a French drain back there we didn't know and that was all I think handled already by the, by Mark. So the other question was landscaping because in the plans, they are leaving the spruces, the original plans, they were leaving the spruces that are behind our buildings. There's eight of them back there, but they've been dying. Um, they're 25 years old and that's probably part of the problem. But anyway, they've been dying and we've been having them removed from in front of our garages as well as in back of our buildings. So we've had four or five of them removed in the past five years, I would say. And I just wanted, and they had no plans of putting any other landscaping back there. And they're ugly, they're dying from the ground up and they, they um, we've been trimming them from the ground up. So about five or six feet on the bottom, at least, they are bare and just with nothing there. And so Greg, um, Tim took a look at them today and he said, yes, you're right, and we will take care of that. So he's, he's planned right now on either taking all of them or some of them down, and then I guess they'll um, put in similar landscaping to the rest of the thing. So I was encouraged by that. I mean, you know, he just came, took a look at it, and agreed with me, and, and I think things are going to be fine. We're, we're actually looking forward to this. <laughs> so, that's what and like I think that's hear. it. Okay, Tim, I did, uh, did not a question there, but did you want to address that at all? Uh, Judy's a very nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did talk about, and I agree with her 100%, if trees die, we're taking it down. So Okay, great. We make it right. Okay, we appreciate you working with the neighbors. That's uh, one of the things we like to do as a local community out here. We'd like to hear that. Tim, All right, Tim, yeah. before you go, and I may ask a quick question, what are you going to replace these with so we can address this in the decision tonight? Uh, well, I, I, it would be similar to what we already uh, have designed throughout the property, so I have to get with the landscape architect. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll just, if they make an approval tonight, we'll put a condition that the landscaping plan be updated accordingly. So, I agree. okay. Thank you. Greg, is there anyone else that uh, we can see that cares to speak? Hi. Um, oh no. I got, uh, my name is Greg Kaiser. I got a question. I don't know if you can see me. I don't know if I'm on video. Uh, right now we cannot, or I cannot. Yeah, I got a question about the foliage. Can you see me or hear me? I, I, oh. I, no. I don't know how to get on the video part of it, I guess. Well, we can prob probably work with that. that um, is that all right, Greg? Greg, you're muted. I am muted? No. Yeah. Sir, just give your name and address. We'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, my name is Greg Kaiser. I'm at 5086 Foley Road. So I'm kind of like, I think, at the west end of the project. Mm hmm I guess my question is just about the foliage. They said they're going to take down the foliage to do this project. And I just want to know why they're taking it down. And then like you said, I think you said you're going to replace it, but replace it with what exactly? 
Okay. Uh, so like, Tim, I, think, I think if it's going to be a little bit of an eyesore, you know, because I like the foliage and I, I don't see back there, but they're going to take it all down there and they're going to have a bunch of, I guess, construction equipment there. And I just want to know, so I guess, the reason why they had to take down foliage and then what they're going to be replacing it with. Okay. Uh, Tim, are you aware of the location of this gentleman? Uh, no, not exactly. It sounds like he's uh, west of our property on Foley Road. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. Yes, sir. So I can I can see from my backyard the area that you'll be building. And I said right now, because there's a bunch of foliage there right now. So what we see is just a bunch of trees back there. And I think you said something like you had to take those down for this project and just want to know what um, the reasoning was. And if you aren't taking them down, what are you going to be replacing them with? Well, our, our intention is anything that we can keep, we're going to keep, number one. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't want to go in there and take down mature trees when we can keep them uh, and have a part of the development. Uh, part of the landscaping plan, I guess, addresses exactly what we're putting back in there. Um, so I don't know how else to address that. Mark, do you have any comments? Um, if I could... Uh... Greg, I, I'm gonna have to go to Greg again. <laughs> You're fine. Actually, I think I have your answer for you too, Mark. So yeah, if you, I mean, if you, I'll share the screen. I'll share the screen anyway. But it looks like based on the submitted landscaping plan, there's going to be river birch back in this area, and by Burnham. Yeah. So you have river birch through here, and then by Burnham through here. Now this part, this piece right here, is not part of the development. And there's a large, large tree that's there. It's uh, like a 60 inch diameter tree. That stays, that stays there. Okay, so that's gonna stay. Okay, that's, yeah. Cause I think that's what I see from my backyard. So I'm just was curious as how much, you know, foliage will still stay intact back there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question, Greg? Uh, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, it does. Cause like I said, I just wonder what's going to stay back there and what you guys were planning on taking down and hopefully you can leave as much as you can. That's all. Oh yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Mr. DeLong, anyone else that we can. I don't see, I don't know if Susan wants to say anything or not. I mean, ask her. Nope. I'm good. Are you good? Okay. Just making good. sure you're welcome. Doesn't look like we have anyone else. Okay. Uh, I'll send it back to members of the board right now. Any final questions, observations uh, at this point? Not for me. Yeah, none for me. None for me. I think this is a winner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Charlie, I do have a question going back to the sidewalk. Yes. Um, I rode, I drove by that to try to see where the sidewalk is now at the Foley Square, and if there's snow on the ground, I, I really can't tell. Does there a sidewalk, and Greg, um, maybe this is for you right now, does Foley Square sidewalk go from their entrance to Foley Road and not to the north of their property? Sure, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen again since I'm getting good at it tonight now. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, to answer your question, Marty, there's sidewalks completely along Foley Road, and then it turns and goes north up to the property line here. So it runs so it, it runs their entire length of their property on both sides. So it runs Covedale and on Foley Road. And then what they're proposing to do is extend it from, I, I don't know if you see where my cursor is kind of circling. Um, they're proposing to extend it from here north to their to their drive. That's what okay. So it would connect their development to the existing um, sidewalk on Foley Road or on Cove Deal, sorry. Sure. Yeah. So then next property north of Garden Road, is that the water tower? Yes. <clears throat> is, is that water tower? Um, That just, you know, who knows? I'm sorry, Marty, your, your, your signal is going out on that. What was your question again? Um, 
is there any chance there's a future development where the water tower is now? I highly doubt it. Um, that's providing water to the community. So we probably want to make sure we have water. Let's leave it. <laughs> Just be on the safe side. I don't, I don't, I would highly, and I, unless they find another location to build another water tower or a water resource, such as a reservoir or something, I just don't, I don't see that property developing. Okay. So then no need for the sidewalk to go beyond where they're proposing it to go. Well, the, the neighboring development to the north, which is Dellers Glen, which is kind of tucked in there after you go over the crest of the hill, you know, as um, Mr. Uh, Rosenberger was saying earlier, um, it is really hilly through there. And they do not have a sidewalk along Covedale either. They do have internal sidewalks in their development, but nothing on, um, on, on Covedale Avenue. Let me see if I can try to pull up here. Maybe this will. Okay. And I did drive by there the other day, but with snow on the ground. Yeah, I it's a little difficult when there's, yeah. I mean, it's hard to see a lot of things right now with this. And hold on, I can actually just so you, everyone is aware what we're talking about. Um, let me share my screen once more here. This is K Hamilton County Cages. So this is the GIS mapping um, on a nice sunny day. So there you go. Um, as you can see, here's the sidewalks along Foley Road. And then they curve and kind of come up along this east property line. And they terminate at the southern edge of this development. So we're, you know, their drive will be somewhere up in here and they'll extend it up here. But as you can see, there's no additional sidewalks until you get up here and then they're just internal in the development up here. So, and this is like really super hilly through here, so. Yeah, yeah. So does that answer your question for you? Yes, it does. All right. Okay, anything else? If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, on this project. I'll make a motion that we go forth with this and with the uh, landscaping being updated. And probably you want to add the comments submitted in their response letter. I'll go along with that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, motion by Mr. Weisker, is there a second? I'll second that. It's Neil. Mr. O'Connor, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously approved. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very, and your group very, uh, very much for all the work you've done toward this. And Mr. DeLong, uh, thank you also. So that concludes uh, uh, Case ZC 2021 DSO2. Thank you. Greg, th thank you, Greg, for helping yes. you. Yes. <laughs> And thank you, Mark and Tim, for everything. And, and Jenny, I mean, these were great drawings and easy for us to go through. It was a great application. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate it. And thank you for the citizens for your interest, too. Um, it's always great to see uh, community participation in these meetings. We don't see it very often in the Zoning Commission, that's for sure. So. <laughs> well, we do out here, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> we're good here. <laughs> good, yeah. Tim, thanks for working with the, with the residents also. That's definitely okay. okay. That concludes that hearing. Um, next item would be old business, Mr. DeLong. Sure, I'll just give a quick update. Um, at your last meeting, we had the review and um, recommendation for the revision to the township zoning resolution, official zoning map, and fee schedule. Um, the Board of Trustees will be holding a special meeting on March 2nd at 9 a.m. It will be on Zoom. Um, and um, if they make a decision that evening, there'll be a 30 day referendum period um, before uh, that goes into effect if they do make a recommendation or the, if they do approve it that evening. So, Greg, Greg yeah. do you think that's going to go through? Uh, we will find out. Okay. <laughs> I sure hope, I hope it does. So, okay. It's, it's in their hands. So, we, yeah. we hope it was a lot of hard work went into it. So, and I think, yeah. it's, a lot of, and I think it's a lot of good positives for the community. Um, so I'm hoping everyone supports what we're trying to do. So, and we're not, and just so the community is aware, this is a major um, revision to the code. A lot of it was just reorganization of the code. Um, we did try to alleviate some rules for people that have corner lots for fencing. 
Uh, we're just trying to make things better for the community. Our fee schedule, we did not adjust fees for uh, residential. We actually lowered those fees about three years, well, back in 2018, so I guess three years ago. We're trying to lower some of the fees now for the commercial um, in the commercial sector uh, for when they get permits from us too to kind of help people out. So, and we want to see the community invest in their property. So we don't want to overfee them on everything. Um, but make them make sure they're doing things right and doing it in a positive way. So we're, we're excited about this and it'll be such an easy code for everyone to read. And our current code has actually hindered some development from coming into the township with it being so restrictive. And I think the community needs to be aware of that. We've lost some really good developments um, because of some of the stipulations in the current code. So we're hoping this one will be more user friendly and business friendly and developer friendly. Okay, anything else, Greg, under old business? Not under old business. Okay, members of the board, old business, any items? Nothing. Nope. Okay, Greg, new business. Sure, and I'll let Tony, he can chime in anytime he wants on this too. Um, Delhi Mixed Use Project over at the old Remke is still moving forward. Um, if you see things on social media, say we're building Section 8 housing, please disregard <laughs> them. Yeah. Um, we knew that would happen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of phone calls about that. Um, we are not building Section 8 housing up there, um, but it is a project. It's taken a lot of time. You know, this is a big project. There's a lot of players in the game, and we're really trying to make sure we do what do it right up there. So um, we do appreciate everyone's patience. This stuff does not happen overnight, and when construction starts, it's not going to finish overnight either. So we really appreciate everyone's patience in this, and, you know, we're hoping this will be a good catalyst for the community. Um, as I've mentioned in previous meetings, we're seeing interest from outside the region for businesses looking at the township, but they're also watching what happens here. So people are seeing the community, the township's investing in itself and that's a positive for the community. Um, Greenside Estates uh, over at the old par three, we just issued our 13th um, permit zoning certificate for the house over there. Heather Ridge, which is the one you guys rezoned back last year up on Cleves Warsaw, they're still yeah. working on design. Um, the property still has not transferred, but they are working on design that does take time. Uh, there is still an anticipation that they would uh, build this year, um, start construction at least this year on the infrastructure. Uh, Blue Rue Car Wash, which is up on um, plan to go between Shell Gas Station and Fifth Third. Um, they're expecting to break ground in March. Jim Luby CPA is um, under construction on his new office building up on Ebenezer. That was a case we had to do a rezoning for back, or gosh, dang, about a year ago now, I think. It's been a while. Um, so that's moving forward. Mount St. Joe's Rec Center is complete. Um, if you, if when they have it open for the public to tour, I mean, there's limitations on getting in there because of COVID and everything. But once they do have it open for a public tour, everyone should go check it out. It's really, really nice. Um, the uh, Skyline Chili, if you've driven by, you'll see a big old dumpster out there. Um, so they are underway with their remodeling project. It's going to take eight weeks estimated to do the interior dining room renovation. So the dining room is closed for eight weeks. And thereafter, they're gonna close the drive-through down for two weeks um, once the dining room's reopened um, to relocate the drive-through to make it better over there at that property. So we really appreciate the investment they're making in our community. Yeah. Um, we did issue a new permit um, for a new business over in the Rapid Run Plaza down here where La Rosa's and Eagle Bank and all them are located. It's called Shop Sherbon. It is a woman's boutique, so they should be opening here soon um, with a new store. That will have that plaza completely full. Um, and just, you know, we hear a lot of things about, oh my gosh, the township has got all these vacancies. There's vacancies everywhere. And we really don't have a lot of vacancies. Um, our vacancy rate is sitting right now at 14.7%, which in the middle of a pandemic is pretty impressive. Um, and I kind of was calculating because there is a project plan for the old central hardware, you know, either demolish it or they are marketing it. So they are trying to still make it occupied. Once that thing is either occupied or demolished, our vacancy rate in the township will drop to 8.8%, which is really unheard of, even in a superb market. Um, I had some statistics from back in 2019 where even like Beachmont Avenue over in Anderson Township and Corrine Avenue um, back um, back in 2019, they were pushing 20% vacancy rates. So we're sitting extremely well right now. Um, we had 13 new businesses open last year alone in the township. But one of the challenges we do have, and I'm not going to deny it, is the spaces people want, we just don't have right now. They're looking for that 5,000 square foot range. 
we have things in the like 800 or 1200, or we have these bigger spaces. And that's not what people are really wanting right now. Plus we have the challenge of our buildings being designed where they sit perpendicular to the road and not parallel and visibility is crucial for commercial, um, the commercial industry and retail industry. So we do have some challenges with that, but I think we're doing pretty good right now. Um, a lot of our plazas are filling up and um, some of them are at full capacity right now, which when I started here in 2016, I can honestly say they weren't. So we're really happy to see that progress moving. And I think as, as I mentioned earlier, once our project really gets on the ground, we're gonna see things change even more in the, in the positive direction. So that is about all I've got. Tony, do you have anything you wanna share about projects? Yeah, I was, or I was gonna add one more thing that Greg and I did receive plans for the rebuild for the rapid run. I'm sorry, uh, Delhi Pike, Mount Vernon rapid run. So we have reviewed some preliminary plans. The La Rosas down there, the La Rosas. La Rosas. <laughs> what did I say? You didn't say anything. <laughs> and I thought we were changing the street there for a minute. <laughs> Frank and I did. I, and, uh, we just had some comments on landscaping that they're going to address and some, you know, some of our opinion, what it should be. They did have to go in front of the BZA for the approval to put their drive through window. They were going to have a pickup window um, facing uh, Delhi Pike. Um, so, but uh, we just had minor comments on the landscaping. And uh, so it looks like they're moving forward as well. And the, that still will remain open during construction. That'll still just be a carry out, is that correct? It'd be carry out, pick up, and delivery, pick Charlie. Up, right. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. Thank you. Okay, members of the board, new business. Nothing here. Hearing none, none, I'll, none. I'll, entertain, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I, <laughs> I think that was Mr. Michaels, wasn't it? Made that <laughs> We'll give it to Marty. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't, but it can be. Well, maybe Marty. <laughs> <laughs> who, was second, who was the second on that? I think it was Dan. Dan. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll give it to Dan. And yeah, everyone, just, everyone has made a motion tonight. So yeah, yeah. Every, everybody gets recorded in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. All, okay. all in favor. We've all been here. All, right. all in favor. Hey, Aye. 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 Meet hey, Greg. Aye. I just want to say That's thanks good. again for Greg for what you yeah. do. Oh, for yeah. Delhi. Oh, yeah, well, do. Tony does his lot a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget Tony. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know Tony's over there. Right, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. We we do work hard. We are a very small and mighty department, that's for sure. And oh, we have our hands dabbled in a lot of things. So we have a t-shirt for that. Then. Small yeah. and mighty. Yeah. Small and mighty. I know. I don't know. Maybe put a big D on the front, but that also looks like D long. So I look Eric. I don't want to do that. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But well, thank was, you very much. Yeah, that, Appreciate that was it. impressive tonight. That the presentation, the drawings, everything were well yes. done. Well I do done. apologize. I did not have my PowerPoint showing. So, yeah. Well, Facebook's going to see we're oh, not perfect people. We, we should have noted that sooner. <laughs> I was looking at my. I was looking at the one you sent me. I wasn't looking at screen. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't yeah. looking. I was getting chat, so I wasn't looking at that. But it's all good. So, but I. Yeah. Yeah. It's so all well done. Good. All righty. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. Good, good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.